Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, October 8, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Chicago, Illinois. Well, first we have an observation by a reader of the register who apparently was running two VPNs at the same time. First of all, they were running the iOS Warp application that Cloudflare came up with in order to use its 1111 DNS over HTTPS service. Now, secondly, he was also using NordVPN as an IPsec VPN provider using Ike. The problem here, at least in my opinion, is that Cloudflare implemented their solution as a VPN. Now he disabled the actual Warp application, but left that VPN established. Now when he then also enabled the Nord VPN, VPN, well, in essence, nothing was encrypted at all. Now, Register is putting it somewhat here on NordVPN to actually come out with a patch for it. Possible that this is a solution, but in the end, you always have to be careful if you're running two VPN solutions at the same time, because you can end up with some odd routing situations where, like in this case, your traffic is not actually going to get encrypted. And Singapore security researcher by the handle of a vacant found interesting vulnerability in WhatsApp that Facebook patched last week. This vulnerability can be triggered with a simple GIF image that has been manipulated to trigger a double free vulnerability. Awakened has published a pretty detailed blog with a sample code and proof of concept walking you through the exploitation here. Given that we hear so much about these double free vulnerabilities, well, it's uh, certainly a good idea to take a look at this blog post to better understand what these vulnerabilities are and how they are exploited. Probably the most straightforward way to exploit this vulnerability is for an attacker to send an image that has been crafted to exploit this vulnerability to the victim. The victim has to open the image, which of course happens automatically if the victim and the attacker are friends. What is probably a little bit more tricky is that even if the victim is just previewing this image, for example, after downloading it and then trying to send it to one of the victim's friends, all it takes is for the victim here to view the image in the WhatsApp gallery because it does render a preview image of the image and that will already trigger the vulnerability. In general, all it takes is a preview of the image within WhatsApp. As soon as WhatsApp parses the image, the vulnerability can be exploited. And Apple today released its next uh, operating system, macOS Catalina. Now, at this point, I'm not aware of any security content in this update, but typically a week or so after these major updates, we may see a security update for some of the older versions of macOS. I also noted that there is a new version of Safari that was offered at the same time. At this point, I would recommend that you just apply the Safari update. That should take care of any important security issues that are being addressed in macOS Catalina, but be a little bit careful with macOS Catalina at this point. There are some major changes to the operating system that may break a number of older applications. Last year, one of the big news stories was MageCard, the JavaScript that was inserted into a number of name brand websites like Newegg and British Airways in order to steal user credentials or first of all, credit card numbers. Now, since then, the news about MageCard has died down somewhat, but Risk IQ just came up with another report to sort of outline the current state of MageCard Card, they found so far 17,000 domains infected by it. And again, remember, one thing MageCard did was that it 
infected various libraries. So that in part probably explains the large number of domains infected by it. Also, it went after some very common vulnerability in shopping cart networks, like for example, Magento and OpenCart. So the short message here is MageCard is far from dead. It's still out there. It's still collecting data, even though it's probably now more commonly found on smaller e-commerce websites and not so much on these big name brand websites that brought it into news originally. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. If you are attending our Seam Summit uh, this week here in Chicago, say hi. And I should have a couple of stickers with me. So I'll always gladly hand them out. That's it. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.